I do not have time to go into uh, the three pillar studies that were put out in the 90s trying to show people are born this way, but this started it. This got the whole ball rolling that the innate immutable theory born that way cannot change. Simon LeVay did this study in 91 published in Science and uh, found a difference in the hypothalamic structure between heterosexual and homosexual men and said, aha, it's biological or genetic. I can break it down and, and, and debunk the study so easily, but there's no time. But he himself said, it's important to stress what I did not find. I did not prove that homosexuality is genetic or find a genetic cause for being gay. End of story. <laughs> but that's how it was spun in the media. Secondly, the twin study done by Bailey and Pillard, published the same year in the Archives of General Psychiatry. Dr. Anne Fusto Sterling, a self-proclaimed lesbian at Brown University, said this is such poorly interpreted science, even my research students 101 can debunk it. And Bailey himself said there must be something in the environment to yield the discordant twins. Again, if I took about 15 minutes, I could laser it you know, and debunk it. Very easy, these studies. Thirdly, Dean Hamer and associates at the NIH in Science published a study in 93. Homosexual brothers had this particular X chromosome passed from their mothers. And then it read in the newspaper's front page, worldwide, gay gene discovered. But then Hamer himself says these genes do not cause people to become homosexuals. But that's not what the media spun because it was a multi-million dollar campaign that my brothers will be teaching you about this evening and tomorrow, that they wanted people to believe in native mutable born that way and cannot change. It really was a strategically planned uh, campaign, socially, social marketing political campaign. Last year, the American Psychological Association put out this quote. Although much research has examined the possible genetic, hormonal, developmental, social, and cultural influences on sexual orientation, no findings have emerged that permit scientists to conclude that sexual orientation is determined by any particular factor or factors. Folks, people with SSA are not born that way. They admitted it. Although jokingly, they came out a few months ago with a position statement saying that this type of therapy I do, reorientation therapy, doesn't work, they said, and it's bad. And actually it's very funny if you read the fine print. They said publicly, and it was spun, it doesn't work and it's, uh, it's, it's unhealthy, deleterious for the health of the client. But if you read the fine print, what they said was, the studies, the 70, two studies they looked at out of the 600 that have been done over the last 100 years. They said the methodology was suspect. So they didn't say it couldn't work. They just said the methodology was suspect in many of these studies. And the six-member task force that came up with this position were all homosexual-oriented or pro-homosexual. They would not let anyone else on that six-member task force. So it's a joke. The year before, they say people aren't born this way. And then this year they come out and say, well, this therapy really doesn't work. But again, it's, they're, they're manipulating a position which is not based on science, actually. You heard of the Human Genome Project, $5 billion paid by the US government to map out the genes of the body. Dr. Francis Collins was the former director of the Human Genome Project. He is now the director of the NIH, National Institutes of Health. And he stated, we didn't discover any gay gene. There isn't any such a thing. It ain't there, folks. There is no DNA test. There is no medical test to determine if a boy or girl will have same-sex attraction. So people are not born this way, although that is what is taught in the educational system, in the political arena, in religious communities, and certainly in the medical and mental health professions. Shame on them. <laughs> because it ain't necessarily so. Dr. Robert Spitzer is a pillar of the American Psychiatric Association. And he did a study of 200 men and women who came out of homosexuality. And he said, like most psychiatrists, I thought homosexual behavior could only be resisted. 
and that no one could really change their sexual orientation. I now believe that to be false, some people can and do change. That was landmark that a secular, atheistic, Jewish psychiatrist of the APA for the last, he's a pillar for 20, 30, no, 30 some odd years. I could tell you more about this, but there's not time. He came out and said people can change. He was lamb blasted. He got death threats. He teaches at Columbia University. They tried to have him expelled from the university. The homosexual activist did. I could go into this study and tell you the good results, but there's no time. Uh, Dr. Stanton Jones and Dr. Mark Yarhouse did a study published in 2007 called Ex Gays, a longitudinal studies, study of about 100, a little less than 100 men and women who made the change to varying degrees who didn't do traditional therapy, they were in ministries and they came out of homosexuality. This study was rigorously done. They just presented a paper at the uh, this year's 09 American Psych Psychological Association, a follow-up study of, uh, of, of many of these subjects showing that really the change was uh, tangible, substantial, and continuing over a long period of time. Edward Stein is a, a Jewish man, homosexual apologist. His book was uh, published out of Yale University, or he's from Yale University, it's Oxford University Press. And he said in the mismeasure of desire. Now, this is a homosexual activist. You will note in my terminology, I do not use the G-A-Y word because that is a socio-political term. I'm a gay guy, and I'm perfectly straight. <laughs> yeah. Happy, <coughs> married, straight guy. Gay is supposed to mean happy. Yeah. And I lived in that life, ladies and gentlemen, and I didn't find much happiness there. <laughs> it's a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. So you will not hear me use the G-A-Y word specifically because it is a socio-political term for the acceptability of the homosexual condition. So this homosexual male, who's a brilliant guy, wrote this book and said, ladies and gentlemen, we're not born this way. He said it himself. Science will never bear it out. But we need to be treated fairly and respectfully for who we are, and I completely agree with you. This is a wonderful book, and this is the website, mygenes.co.nz. My Genes Made Me Do It. It's a sardonic title by uh, Dr. Neil and his wife, Briar Whitehead. He is a researcher, and he really took apart all these ridiculous studies, and he keeps updating it. That's why it is now available for free on the web at mygenes.co.nz is New Zealand, where they live. Great book. That'll really, you know, knock out all this socio-political science trying to show people are born this way. So, let me tell you then briefly about the meaning. What causes somebody to have SSA? So I'm going to give you three pillars of the meaning, and then quickly ten causes in about... Uh, um, I actually have one. I forgot to put it in. Okay, sorry. Thank you. No, maybe I'll take yours. Do you have the thing to plug in? Do you have to put the... Uh, oh, it works over that? I think. It's kind of, I think it has to be in the computer. Yeah, there's got to be something to hook into the book. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure to lock the panel? I know. Where do I say no? <laughs> oh, I'll go over here and say no. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. Very good. We tried. We tried. This is so gay. You can't find do anything mechanical. <laughs> Frick <laughs> 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 Now I have to get it to work, <laughs> otherwise I have to eat my words. Oh, if the battery works, it'll do it. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so that AA, AA? Say again? AAA battery? No, the smaller ones. Oh, wait a minute, are those AAA? Yes, sir. Uh, man to the rescue. Wow, great. Okay, 
Well, let's forego that. I don't want to waste time. So three pillars why people have this desire. Number one, it is always a symptom. A symptom of what? Unhealed wounds of the past. Mm -hmm. If somebody has SSA, it represents pain. That's why to be bigoted or prejudiced is re-wounding, re-abusing an individual. Number two, and I'll go into the ten causes, potential causes. Number two, it represents needs for love that were never satiated in early childhood and adolescence. 100% of the time. And finally, number three, as Dr. Elizabeth Moberly called it in her book, it's a homo-emotional, or as I call it, also a homosocial drive. The homo-emotional, now you've heard of many people use reparative therapy, and that came from Moberly's work, and then Dr. Nicolosi, Joseph Nicolosi, further developed the concept. They use the word reparative not because it's broken, but the desire for a boy or a man to join with another man is really a desire of the heart to internalize either the paternal bonding that was not sufficiently experienced or also male bonding with other guys in the pre-adolescent and adolescent years, which then became sexualized after adolescence. Mm. The same thing holds true for the girl. She didn't sufficiently bond with mother and other girls that normal need for development then becomes sexualized through puberty. The world then mistakenly says to these people, you're born this way, which is completely false, scientifically and scripturally. So Moberly said this drive is a reparative drive to reconcile the psychic wounds and to obtain that love. That's why the word reparative drive has been used in this type of therapy developed by Dr. Moberly, and then Dr. Nicolosi. So I call it homo-emotional, that same gender parent bonding, father-son, mother-daughter, homosocial, guys with guys, girls with girls. Secondly, it is essentially nothing to do with sex. This is not a sexual condition or a sexual orientation. Again, we're heterosexually designed. If somebody has SSA, the meaning is they need daddy's love, a guy, or the girl mommy's love, perhaps. Now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, if you're a parent of an SSA child, this is not a blame game. It's not because you were a bad parent, none at all. What I'll show you in a moment is the temperament of these kids are very often extremely sensitive. So a lot of times square, uh, uh, round, uh, square peg in a round hole, father and son's characters are mismatched other daughters too, or other reasons. Secondly, it's a need for gender, I gender identification. If the boy does not internalize his daddy's love and the love of other guys, he will have a hole in the soul and that needs to be filled. And after puberty, that desire becomes eroticized or sexualized. And then he wants to join with another guy. It's a metaphor, I need your penis it's a metaphor, it's I don't feel my own. I don't feel my own masculinity, because one and one equals two. <coughs> if I had two magnets here, uh, uh, the opposites attract, right, naturally. Polarities are the same thing, they repel each other. So if a guy feels attracted to a guy, it's not morally wrong or bad. It's again the soul trying to heal and get what it didn't get early on. The problem is sex never does it because those needs are that of a child or an infant or pre-adolescent and children do not want nor need sex. They need love and bonding. So they're trying to get that gender identity. It's like the homosexual community, especially the male community, is so sexually charged and the sexual experience is so dramatic and powerful and it's like shooting up and it's like getting gender from the other person. The relationships statistically do not last long. And if they do, they have sex outside the relationship. That's the norm. And finally, fear of intimacy with the opposite sex. Many of these boys are over-identified with a mother, and they internalize that femininity. The girls may be over-identified with a father and internalize his masculinity. Many of these women have been sexually 
violated or other ways abused.